Hey guys, Russian Sparky here. If you want to get right to the point for how to connect aluminum wiring with copper uh, and skip the boring theory, you can uh, jump to the uh, time code I'm mentioning uh, right here in subtitles. Uh, but if you want to hear the theory first and then get to the practical part, well, watch the video in its entirety without skipping. So I'm gonna leave it up to you. So let's begin. Even though I live in the United States, what I will be talking about here applies to the rest of the world. Any place they use solid aluminum wiring, or they used to use it or use it now, this problem applies. I will also say that I will show you some cool hands-on stuff, but for the next few minutes, just bear with me. Let's understand the theory before we jump into practice. So you probably heard about uh, aluminum wiring, uh, and the question is, how bad is it? How bad is it really when you buy a house if, it, if it's wired with aluminum. And if it is, what do you do? What do you do about that wiring? So let's begin. Uh, let me make it clear that first of all, I'm talking about solid aluminum wiring, just like you see here. And I'm talking about a uh, smaller gauge, um, 12 or 10 gauge, well, maybe eight. Uh, and for those of you watching in the rest of the world, I'm talking about uh, wiring that's four, um, six uh, or 10 square millimeters. I am not, referring to stranded wiring. There's not a problem. There is not a problem with stranded wiring. You see these kind of wires feeding your electrical panels uh, or supplying your house. There is not a problem with it. When I talk about problem with aluminum, I'm talking again about solid, single strand aluminum wiring. So what is the problem? Uh, there was a copper shortage in uh, from the middle of 1960s through 1970s. And um, the manufacturers, at least in the United States, and probably elsewhere in the world, decided to start using the alloy AA1350 that was designed for uh, transmission power lines for house wiring. And the problems started right away. Uh, to this day, to this day, uh, there was there are plenty of homes left with that old aluminum wiring from that era. And again, anytime one of those homes is bought or sold, there's a question, what do we do? Do we just rip it all out and start all over? Well, let's come back to that. So why does it do this? Why does it burn, scorch, melt, and cause all this trouble? Well, let's, let's go through this. Let's go, of, of the, let's go through the cycle that this bad old single strand aluminum goes through. So you see a regular wire here, aluminum wire attached to a screw terminal, the kind of terminal you would find on a switch or a, a receptacle. So it's uh, aluminum wire under a washer and it begins to oxidize. Basically, you know, just like steel or iron rusts, aluminum oxidizes. Uh, sometimes it's uh, an invisible layer of oxidation. Sometimes it's white. Uh, so, uh, when it oxidizes, that's a problem. Aluminum oxide does not conduct electricity as well as copper does, as well as uh, a copper oxide does. So copper wires do not have that, that problem because even oxidized copper wires still conduct electricity pretty well, not aluminum. So what, ha what happens when it doesn't uh, conduct electricity as well anymore? Well, it starts to heat up. Uh, when it starts to heat, it starts to expand. And as it expands, it flattens out under that terminal. As it flattens out and cools back down, well, it's now oval in shape. And it doesn't touch, it doesn't have as good a contact with that terminal anymore. So next time the load is on, it heats up any more, er, even more. And so on and so forth. It creates this vicious circle, this vicious cycle that in the end leads to a catastrophic failure. Well, some say, why don't you make a spring-loaded terminal? Well, they tried that. Uh, there are these uh, split washers, there are s spring washers. It all works for, for a while, but it, it, it eventually just prolongs the, postpones the inevitable. Uh, sooner or later, uh, the expansion and contraction cycle uh, for aluminum uh, goes to the point where the spring can't really help anymore it starts heating up again and there we go again with what they call catastrophic failure 
Now, you might ask, uh, why didn't that stranded wire have this kind of a problem? Well, um, the problem being the, the creep that I mentioned, right? Well, the answer is simple, and I'm simplifying some of this, but the idea is this. With thick, stranded wiring, the lugs, these contacts, the holders where the wire is screwed in, can also be made from aluminum. And that aluminum will shrink and expand in sync with the wiring, therefore not creating this creep cycle. Again, I'm simplifying some of this, but that's the general idea. So remember this. If you can make lugs and contacts out of aluminum, that alleviates some of the problem. Well, uh, and if you recall, another part of the problem is the oxidation, right? When it gets coated with the layer of oxide, which causes it to heat up. Well, a solution to that is to coat it with, uh, with a kind of a compound that will slow that down or stop that. So any solutions that I will be describing for this aluminum, old aluminum problem will include making uh, contacts out of aluminum or and coating uh, the wires in antioxidant paste. So you've just discovered that your house has aluminum wiring, old aluminum wiring, or you're considering buying a house that has aluminum wiring. Can something be done to make that wiring safer? And the answer is yes. Now, I'm gonna preface it all by saying, consult with the qualified electrician if you don't know what you're doing, even if you do think you know what you're doing, still consult with one, blah, blah, blah. Do it at your own risk. Uh, but I believe that uh, an adult who kind of knows uh, their way around the wiring can do this safely. So, let's say you have an old outlet with old solid aluminum wiring. Uh, how can you make it safer? Well, first of all, you can buy a device that is marked, uh, that is listed for aluminum. This is not one of them. You see how it says copper, CU, and L is crossed out? Well, this is not a device. This is not an outlet listed for aluminum. But at your local home improvement store or electrical warehouse, you can buy dual rated switches and outlets that can be safely terminated to aluminum wiring. So, okay, consider that done. Now, what if you have to extend and attach copper wiring to the existing aluminum wiring? Or if you, let's say you don't have devices that are dual rated, what do you do then? Well, let's talk about that. As I mentioned in the theory part of this video, uh, uh, one of the parts to the uh, solid aluminum solution is uh, find a way to fight oxidation, that, that thin, invisible, or white film uh, of oxide on the surface of aluminum that uh, makes the electrical contact not so good. Well, there are pastes that can fight that. This one right here is made by this company. I'm not advertising them. It's called Noalox, no aluminum oxidation, hence the name. It's supposed to cut through the existing uh, coat of oxide and prevent more oxides from forming. However, many of the existing um, products on the market already come preloaded with this piece, but I just wanted to show you what this is because you're gonna see this on those products. So one of the products that allows you to connect solid aluminum to copper are these purple LQ twist connectors. And if we cut one open, you will see that on the inside, they come stuffed with that paste that I showed you before. And this little spiral, this little spring, I'd imagine it's some pro proprietary alloy that is made to uh, basically keep the aluminum and copper twisted together and snug while maintaining good contact. So let's say you have a, a regular outlet, not aluminum copper rated, just for copper. You can pigtail, right? So you can have short pieces of wire attached, regular copper wire, attached to its terminals. And then you use LQ twisters to connect the old aluminum wire with the copper. That's one of the solutions. And by the way, they, uh, they can accommodate another wire, new copper wire, 
new copper cable coming out of that outlet if you're trying to extend the circuit. Here's another prog product. This one is called Alumicon. So Alumicon, strictly one wire per hole. Again, you use one to connect to the existing aluminum solid wiring, and you can use two more, let's say one for the pigtail to an outlet and the other to continue uh, the circuit out of this receptacle box. And as you can see, they too, I don't know if you can see in the reflection, come stuffed with some sort of a anti-corrosive paste. And now we're going into a bit of an uncharted territory. And I, I, I'm afraid that some of my fellow electricians or even non-electricians might burn me alive for this. But I learned uh, this trick from a seasoned Sparky. And I also read about it in... Uh, a book written by a pretty seasoned electrician, Rex Caldwell. So, uh, you guys saw this, right? It's basically uh, a bar, right? It's an aluminum bar, not unlike the grounding or neutral bar, in a nice little box that you just snap shut and tuck away inside a box, right? Well, guess what? Bus bars are dual rated. They are rated, rated for aluminum and copper, as long as you use one per hole. So in theory, and I know for a fact some electricians do that, you can cut this bar to pieces and you can use it kind of like this. You just have to wrap it with uh, electric tape afterwards. And yes, you'll have to use some of your own paste. Uh, is it kosher to do? I don't know. <laughs> you technically are using a, a listed component uh, for something that it was not intended to. But again, I know it's done in practice. You know, don't burn me at stake for that. Other electricians do it. So yes, in theory, it can be done. And last but not least, these, these are WAGO, W-A-G-O. They're made in Germany. Uh, they come in all different configurations. You may have seen them uh, red color with just two uh, ports. These are four port ones. Uh, they're used for copper all day on all night. You can use uh, 14 or 12 gauge copper in these. But according to the manufacturer, they are also approved to be used with 12 gauge aluminum wire. But in that case, you have to use their own paste. It's called Alu Plus, also made by Wago. That's that's their part number. It's not expensive. You can pick one of these syringes up for, I don't know, around five dollars. And these are available all over, all over the place. There are uh, lookalikes. Uh, Ideal makes similar looking ones, but for use on aluminum with this paste, make sure you're picking up the authentic Wago ones and use their own paste. Uh, the downside to this, uh, well, some people don't, don't trust them, but that's not an objective reason. I mean, they're listed, they're approved, they're tested, and so on and so forth. The more important objective argument uh, to consider is uh, they're only for 12-gauge wire. If you have 10-gauge aluminum wiring existing, um, well, it won't work with these. And 10-gauge is necessary for 20-amp circuits. If you have a 20-amp circuit, uh, that's 10-gauge aluminum, these are no-go. You will have to fall back on this or on that purple twister I showed you earlier. This, so these two will work with 10 gauge aluminum. If you have existing 10 gauge aluminum wiring, these will not, but they will work just fine with 12 gauge. So there you have it folks, existing solid aluminum wiring can be safely extended, uh, re-terminated to new devices and so on. That said, again, consult with a qualified electrician and consult with insurance companies. Some insurance companies, well, they will not insure your house even if you've addressed every uh, solid aluminum termination in the house. So if that's the case, the choice is obviously shop for another insurance company 
or, um, well, replace the wiring, which could be pretty expensive, as you might imagine. Also, in some cities and counties, they, they don't allow it, and anytime there's a major remodel to a house that would require you to replace it. So consult on that with your local jurisdiction, so to speak. Other than that, um, I hope we covered it pretty well. If you have any questions, concerns, uh, put it down in the comments. Uh, give me a like or a dislike. If it's a dislike, tell me why. I'd like to know. Other than that, thanks again, guys, for watching. Have a good day.